Okay, fellas. All right, guys, welcome to Bar Exam. I'm your host, Allie Rayner, and I'm here with Eric G. What up, Eric? What's the deal? And, what's up? And Mr. Marcus TV. Yo, what up, everybody? So we are going to be talking about, you know, we love throwing it back to breaking down the lyrics, okay? So coming before the bar this week, we're discussing Glorilla and Megan Thee Stallion's hit, Wannabe, all right? So... This song um, went crazy. Like, it's already surpassed 100 million streams. I think that, like, it was doing something between, like, 18 million in the first week. And then at the very peak, it was doing 19.6 million when Cardi B jumped on the remix. So it has been making its waves all summer long. And this will be Megan's fifth number one hit. And then this will be Glorilla's second. Now, it charted number one on a bunch of different places but on billboard i guess it peaked at 11 and then um it's been on the charts for about like 21 weeks or something like that so it's definitely still going strong um they said that like i think just this week that they did another like six thousand digital downloads or something like that so it's still going pretty strong even in august um but in general um, the song is definitely about, you know, women empowerment and it's, it's extremely blunt and a little bit risky <laughs> because it's coming from women and they're talking about like, they don't want to be saved. They want to be out here. I, I guess in, in a nice way of saying it, hoeing around. I don't know how else, <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. Like they're basically saying like, they want to be single. They want to do what they want to do. They want to be dogs just like the guys and they don't want to be saved at all. So the theme is definitely self-confidence female dominance um and they've got a lot of controversial lyrics in here but you know somehow megan's houston flow that smooth flow just delivers it so well and then even though glorilla is a little bit more grittier in her approach um it still it works together like the both of them i think the branding makes sense because they're both you know female empowerment you know women out here doing the same stuff as men um, so it made a whole lot of sense. And I think that they did a really good job on picking the beat because the beat is by Ace C and he sampled Pretty Boy Swag. So it was, it's given that braggadocious vibe, but from the female perspective. So it definitely is, um, an interesting song to say the least. So me and the co-hosts all pick some of our favorite lyrics. So I don't know if anybody wants to do the honors of, you know, opening the floor and telling us what was your favorite your favorite lyric go ahead i, said, I gotta go last okay <laughs> okay all right cool i'll go first just because i'm simple when it came to this i really like um i really like the hook I feel and the reason i like the hook is just because of the way that like meg breaks it down right before she goes into her verse it's really, it's a really simple hook, but the, but the shit that she says in it is still catchy enough to where you knew that people were gonna latch on to this easily. Mm -hmm. Like it was one of those, like the, like again, just like the placement and how she breaks it down. He don't wanna be saved, I'll save him. That is not my nigga, don't claim him. About 20 missed calls, he faded, white boy wasted Channing Tatum, like, she was very she was very smart with how she laid this out again them going back to something that you said earlier it was the the addition of that of that pretty boy swag sample i think they took that idea and ran with it and just basically created a new version but like again for the women and for the year that we're in right now so that to me like it just i just thought it was really smart and then hoes love me like justin bieber you i i don't know what it is about the like the justin bieber and like the like when people do that and like play off that like the hoes love me like justin bieber but i for some reason i always appreciate that because these hoes do be loving justin bieber so it do be facts it do be facts <laughs> and i love that it's like a woman saying it for once because guys have definitely you know taken a line similar to that and ran with this so yeah i like that it's the girls who are like no nah, like these hoes love <laughs> love the ladies too apparently so um and i like that you chose the hook because it 
that is one of those controversial lyrics like right after that line that you said where she said or they say he don't want to be kept don't keep him he don't want the baby then bitch don't keep it ho like that one i was when i was listening to it, i was like wow <laughs> like not expecting that whatsoever and i think that it really does just show you like what 2024 is about it's like all or nothing nowadays you know there are people out there who want to take away women's rights and then there are women who are out there who are like nah like we're definitely exercising them and like if they don't want us then we not out here just keeping anybody you know having babies for no reason so it's definitely uh um one of those those hot button lyrics and they went for it and i'm like i feel like only them them and like maybe sexy red could pull off a line like that. So yeah, so too, I could get it off. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, and then I'm trying to think, what is the other line that I liked? Um, for me, I really liked that Megan threw in like cultural references. She does a good job at doing that. So I'm trying to find the one that I like the most. Um, uh, like the ready or not, I'm coming like Freddie. Like, I thought that was cute, you know? Like, I don't know, I thought that was a good one. And then even like the lines, um, he don't wanna be saved, that's also in the hook, but he don't wanna be saved, don't save him. Or um, I don't wanna be saved, don't save me. Like them throwing that out there, I think is cool because it reminds you of J. Cole's song, No Role Models. And the whole song was basically like, you know, don't save her, like she don't want to be saved. And I, they're just basically like seconding it. Like they're like, yeah, no, we we def wholeheartedly agree. <laughs> like don't save us, we out here living our best life. Don't worry about us. Um, so I thought that was, that was fun. And it definitely took off for the summer. So, you know, I think they did a good job this summer at like, I guess kind of like pushing back the sexy red um uh momentum a little bit because you know i would expect a song like this from her and i feel like they they did a good job at like taking the moment taking the spotlight off of her normal like summer runs you know so this this definitely did it and then cardi b jumping on it they said it helped it like six thousand five hundred percent or something so you already know like when cardi b jumps on it she just puts that stamp of, of approval that makes it now it's going to be a hit for I don't even know like another few months so she does still have that effect yeah she does even though she hasn't dropped and I don't know how long but her features just go crazy every single time so she she <laughs> she is a force that's for sure but um all right what about you Marcus are there any lines that stick out to you so it's not the line it's it's kind of twofold one Megan is on her, Megan and Glow both on her in a real nigga element, bro. They talking about what niggas would do to bitches. Flat out. That's just what they talking about. And nobody else is rapping like that. Nobody else is saying, oh yeah, that nigga's my trick and he fly. Like, cause Meg had that line of uh, can you bring up bring it up again, Shane. Uh when I'm at the air, I check the bags, no destination. Like I change it. That's Meg talking her shit. Like, I ain't flying these niggas out. Like, I'm just gonna be outside. No, it's on the second one. On yes, Meg's uh, part. fuck is a labor. I ain't waiting. Yes. I get the back, then I change destinations. These niggas be crazy. Yes, I'm a dog too. So, I don't want to change them. So if you changing your destination because of you know you don't want to lay out. So you ain't staying. You just gonna get the bag. Change the destination and then be out. That's what niggas do. That's a nigga move. Mm -hmm. But the fact that now you Meg and you doing it, it's like, oh, okay. Like, it's can you really even be mad at her? Because I mean, th the same reason we talked about Sexy Red and everybody else. No one else is rapping like this. But that's not even that's not even the, the best part about this song. That's not even the best uh concept. What's not even why it's a fan? Why I'm a playlist? If you gotta go, you gotta go bring it up one last time, Shane. Scroll all the way to the bottom. All the way. Right there. That is the best challenge visual we have seen in 20. This is the this is the ceiling fan challenge all over again. <laughs> this is wonderful. 
this is because I don't know what female. I don't know if female she wants to be mad, and then if she got her homegirl and she glow, and if she wants to be glow, and then the homegirl <laughs> wants to be mad. I don't care. I don't. It doesn't matter. But this is the best part of the song. Because when it's a tag team, when it's a brunch, when it's too much Casamigos, when it, whatever the fuck it is, it doesn't matter what it is. This is the best part of the song. Every every chick that wants to twerk, that wants to relate, this is their anthem, and I'm here for it. When, when yeah, when she when they want to use their song and they want to be like when it oh bridesmaids, this is it. This is this is it. When you have that back when you. When y'all like, oh, we getting ready, and it's the everything is flowing. This is what you need to be playing. This is on the playlist. So yeah, yeah. this is this is this is the uh, the upper echelon. What are they saying right now? This is the the mirror version <laughs> of ratchet. Yeah, I'm not usually ratchet, but go man. Oh, go because this is this is the stupidest shit. If 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 Carmela really did it was like go man go just that part not not the whole twerking thing in the but just was like go man go, that would go viral and they like oh my god she's so relevant no she's not she you know but I'm just 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 think if her and Michelle was doing that. Oh my god. Oh, go man. Go Michelle. Just I'm surprised someone hasn't done like an AI of that or something. That's yeah. that's something that the was, internet would definitely run with. The internet would so this is the crazy part. Before viral and challenges and you know visuals and all of this, the only person that we knew to break the internet consistently was Kim Kardashian and Beyonce. Those are the only two kind of like the internet's broken. You know, like it's just two. Now you can break the internet on some other like this. This is one of those that would break it. Set like yeah. set like yeah. Any any person of prominence, power, authority doing anything mildly ratchet is a stamp of ratchetness. Because and I hate to say this, Tyree. You know, I've been watching Tyrese is on a little media run right now, talking about his album in that 1992 movie. So he's like been doing all these interviews and he was like, the ratchetness is being like, I don't want to say forced, but it's being accepted where it's not ratchet. Mm. Like Meg twerking is women's empowerment. It's not her twerking. Meanwhile, here we are, what, 15 years removed from a nipple shutting down the internet. I mean, shutting down the Super Bowl and it wasn't a black artist for what ten years after that. J- yeah, Jay Z just got the you know. So we're like, what's acceptable and what's okay and what we can do and like all of this is 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 like off of society norms and it's always changing. But shout out to Megan Glow because I've since the ceiling challenge, this is it. This is the bridesmaid anthem, and I'm here for it. You got a good point. I didn't even think that is a that. fact. Yeah, yeah, it definitely is. Okay, so I'm curious, who do you think had the better verse on this one? That's unfair to say. Because yeah. because it's it's clearly made. Yeah. It's clear, I would say it's, it's clearly made. But it's it's no it's not like Glorilla had a bad verse. Mm-hmm. It's just that we have we have more we have more sample sizes from Meg versus than we do of Glow. So everything that Glow puts out is we're still learning her. We're still like, yeah. okay, this is, she's still, so you want to hear from Glow, but she's not in her bag by any means. She's not like, oh my God, did you see what she, this is, it, it's a, uh, so what was Cardi's run after she had Black and Yellow, Bodak Yellow, and then what was after that? I want to say like, what was that 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 Bickin Head song? And it was the Bickin Head song. There was one with uh, there was that one with the Migos. Mm. So my my there's point there. is that's that's the verge that's the version of Glow we're seeing now. Like it's the is the early stages of Cardi. You know, it's like like yes, like she was finding her footing basically. Right? Yeah. Like yeah. you know, we still you haven't said like 
there hadn't been a glow feature where I'm like, yo, she said what? You know that, and and glow's not lyrical. We don't look yeah. for we don't yeah. Look, we don't look for lyrics like that from Glow. We get them all the time from Lotto. Mm-hmm. You know, so to say who had the better verse is kind of that's that's apples and oranges a little. I mean, bit. yeah, it's, we always get it from May. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah, gonna I agree. Get, I think that like it. it yeah, I think that Meg definitely leans into like metaphors and those cultural references. Like I just remembered. Um, she said, um, you can get your wigs turned like Effie. Like that's from a dream girl. That's a that's a scene from the dream girls. So like the fact that she threw that in there or even like the clock that tea bitch catch it, like that's been going viral lately. So I love that she threw that in there. So yeah, she, I think that she leans into metaphors and cultural references and it does really well because she's so seasoned at it. Like when she first started out, I don't think, I noticed like she was using so many metaphors or um, or that she was doing it so well. And I think that you're right. I think that Glorilla is more about like those punchier lyrics um, and more about like creating a scene rather than, um, you know, trying to be a little bit more lyrical about it, you know, if that makes sense. So. But I will say that, like, I think that Megan did her thing, even though it's their collaboration. I think that she did her thing on this one because um, she killed it. Honestly, she she slid all over this. So hers is the second verse. And I'll just read a little bit of it. So she said, same host hey, and used to want to be besties. You can get your wig turned like Effie. I don't need insurance because a bitch can't wreck me. Ready or not, I'm coming like Freddie. I'm mother. You know, your you know, my trick is your daddy. Clock that tea, bitch. Catch it. You look like a discount me on Etsy. I'm the female titan. I'm stepping on bitches. I'm showing my titties. I tore up the city. At PIMP, I be hoeing these niggas. Like, she killed it. She definitely, like, brought in that Houston vibe. So I'm going to put your that. business out there. I felt like you didn't need to look down when you said all of that. I felt like you <laughs> Like, she knew that. Like, I don't I don't feel like you was, I, I, I don't, I, I feel like that was more for the people. I felt like. Like you was about to be like, hey, hey, you just <laughs> like, I don't, I don't feel like, I don't feel like you, you needed to look down and, and read those lyrics. <laughs> well, I mean, I've been hearing it a lot lately, and then also the way that she, like, the way that she flows, it's easy to try and like catch up on it. Where I feel like Glorilla, hers is so much harder for me to try and replicate because of that accent. Like you have to say the words correctly for it to make any sense or for it to really rhyme correctly with her accent there. So, and I, I just cannot replicate her style. It, hers is a lot like choppier. And you know, I'm president or vice president of the Glorilla fan club. So it's no, it's no hate here. It's all love. But they was like, when you rap like Gorilla, you got to make your voice deeper. Mm-hmm. And that's you do. That shit was funny as hell to me. Like, <laughs> like funny as, like, <laughs> Like even if you are like you have to make your voice deep. and that shit was hilarious. Like you can't you can't go wrong with a glow bird. Like even in your head right now, you gotta you gotta say it lower than the like that's why that's why I started laughing because I because I did that in my head just now. <laughs> yeah, you gotta be <laughs> that shit is oh, like shit. Challenge, man. And then she did the little challenge, even when she said the uh Oh, what did she just do? And uh, the the the, mirror, the the very cute, she very she was in playing that shit had me roll. So yeah, it's wait till that wait wait till that gets into hip hop because Joe Button, Joe Button might be a guy, like might be a prophet. Hmm. He 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 called that Kendrick shit, and it's HBCU season. And what do you hear? Yep. What do you hear? That's why I brought it up that one day because I knew you it don't. Was you, you don't. I, knew, I had a feeling it was gonna the, happen. The too. band ain't playing. Go Meg with the trumpets and shit. They ain't, they not doing that. <laughs> so. Yeah, but that one's an easier one. I feel like for for anybody to be like they're not like us. You know, I feel like anybody. It's a more of a universal type of message. Whereas like this is definitely like. <laughs> the women can get behind this. I don't think the guys are going to feel too comfortable about singing this one out loud. Like, Not for y'all? nothing. That's also just an easier song to play, too. 
Man, yeah. there is no dude who is tripping off the lyrics when this song comes on talking about I can't rock with that. No. That, that, no. No, man. That, that's no just, way. No, man. First of all, and I don't I hate to do this to her, but that's a weird ass dude if he's doing that. <laughs> that's like you ever had one of them homeboys or uh, who say I don't eat chicken off the bone? And y'all can order <laughs> wings. <laughs> like you take it too far. Yeah, I, I do tenders, but I don't really do, but I don't do I don't do bone in chicken. <laughs> that's a weird, that's a that's a and you and right now there's a dude right and, and this is gonna sound he has no swag. He had like he's like, oh yeah, I can't really rock with her because she danced to Megan the style. He's a weird <laughs> dude. Like he's a weird dude. That's a I, weird I agree. I agree. Thank you so much for finally saying it because I'd be feeling like sometimes on on the internet, like in the comment section, it seemed like the guys are like all of a sudden they want they they try and say that they want the girls to be more demure, you know, like quieter, more uh, <laughs> you know, classy or dainty or whatever. But it's like that's not true because when you go out to the clubs and stuff, y'all are not trying to talk to anybody who's standing on the wall, who's tr being awkward. Like yeah. that's not the vibe. So for y'all to act like that's who you want on the internet, and then yeah. be at the party and like that, who you really are trying to chase are the girls who would who would dance to this, who would have a good time to this, who would know all the lyrics. Like let's just keep it, let's keep it honest, you know. So yeah, I agree. But then, yeah, it's like go go back outside, go back outside and touch some grass and get off the internet. Man, uh, they seriously. can't because that same dude who is complaining like that, I I guarantee you, like if Allie was to ask all of her girlfriends, right, all the girls that she knows in her phone, I bet you they have an unmoanable name. Oh, a what type of name? Unmoanable. Un. <laughs> <laughs> Like the, like the, I, I promise you, that is a hilarious way to say that it would be a trash night. Unmoanable. You, you have an unmoanable name. Oh my god! Oh you know, my god! Nobody finna Eugene. Nobody. <laughs> Right, I'd like to get of all the names like Albert oh. or something like that. That's not uh, exactly sexy. No, nah, I promise you, mm -hmm. the dudes, the dudes oh. who hating on the Meg and Glorilla collaboration and soundtrack who don't eat chicken off the bone, it's it's late. Yeah, yeah they ain't getting. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. This is not. Nah. Yeah, they've We're... never made. They've never made it rain in the club. Mm. Mm, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Not. Let me, you know what? I ain't even gonna say make it rain in the club because that's that's a that's a totally different experience. They've never bought a bottle in the club. Okay. You never had a chick with vans bring you out nothing <laughs> with some Amazon sparklers. Like you never you never ordered like that. The only time you got juice in the club was when it was unlimited mimosas that you drank with your homeboys. <laughs> They gotta live. Y'all gotta live at least one time. Y'all ain't got no mimosas. Oh, that'd be wild. Well, yeah. speaking of mimosas, though, do you think that this is a it, is it given brunch worthy? Because you always say if it's a hit, Bro, it's on this brunch. Is, this, this, is this, is, type, yeah. this is the type of brunch that I don't go to because I, I wouldn't go either. I want to go to brunch for food. <laughs> I don't. I want. I want eggs. I want French toast. I want crisp, like crispy bacon. I want an egg. I want an omelet. Right. Like, like this is a turn up brunch. Oh, okay. you know? so like you're not going. You're take. You're there to take pictures on the grassy wall with the neon signs. You're there to holler at your girl. Like that's that. That's a different type of brunch. The food doesn't matter. It's a more of a party, more of a day party. Yeah. You're just having it during yeah. brunch hours. So yeah, you don't even need to eat at those pl at, at those yeah. places. Like. I was gonna say, yeah, I'm not imagining any food being served. It's all no. like um, some mimosas and maybe I don't know fries. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. And as much as I love ass, I don't know that I need ass in front of a full like brunch plate. Like, that's a lot. That's a lot. 
but so it de- like, it de- that's a lot of food to have to go through b- <laughs> like while the ass is right there like maybe if it's right. like like some tacos or something something that i can eat real quick like right. you know, then get right back to the ass then that's cool but <laughs> but it, but it, but also like it's also foreign because if you got ass in the room typically the only food that ass has gone with is wings no one has i had, agree i could not you, agree you, had, you I mean, you haven't had ass and, and eggs. <laughs> like, nah. Like, you, like, you, you ain't had French. You ain't had French toast and ass. <laughs> like, I mean, that that's just not that's not happening. Like <laughs> using uten- using having to use utensils while ass is shaking in your face is it's a lot of extra work. And then yeah. you even you even threw in tacos. Like I don't necessarily know if I want like tacos and because see here's the thing with tacos I always said that because it just sounded so like when you turn like this and eat the taco and then you you like it's yeah no I feel you I always said that because it sounded quick but no what you said wings no that's that's yeah that that is yeah we need actually I want it if there should be more like as and like. Uncustomary food choices. Mm. So like, like, at, like sushi, but that would be crazy. I actually heard of like oh, that's, that, I that feel sounds, like that sounds freak, that, that's a little freaky because I feel like the sushi has to be like on the body and then you have to eat sushi <laughs> that off. Would be cool. And you that could, would be cool. It would be cool, but you also need to know her hygiene standards and what part of the sushi is on her belly button. And is this avocado or is this some fucking California crust? I don't know. <laughs> I don't, I, you don't fucking put the sushi. Now you like you doing that? You're like that's that's not uh-uh. no. right. Like yeah. there is no crunchy on this on this and roll. Then, like, what is this? Mm-hmm. And, then, and then you also you got to think. It's not what you do; it's how you do it. Mm. Let's just say for whatever. Let's just go down this rabbit hole. Very <laughs> oh, here we go. We're. That's the new because you know the you know we have all of these crazy chefs, right? Mm-hmm. They do all of these extravagant uh spreads, grazing boards, charcuterie board, you know, all of these things that are just lavish and you know they didn't fucked up these people's Airbnb, you know. <laughs> <laughs> if if we're going to start serving food on live people, right? Mm-hmm. And you said like sushi. Like that's it. Okay, sushi, Japanese kanichi. Why we gonna have sushi on the different parts? Get your pieces, and then you go and sit down. Some nigga is gonna take it too far and have tenders laid out over all of this, <laughs> and, <laughs> and then like honey drizzle, and then ranch, and then it's gonna it's gonna go too far. We don't know how to act right. That no, we don't. <laughs> No, nah, once we, once they start trying to do like barbecue and shit like that, it's like all right, all right. Yeah, this yeah. down south version. You, you <laughs> they'll deep fry so, anything. Yeah, deep fry shit. Sauce on it. Yeah. That you that like catfish on her thigh. Uh oh. Let's see. Kanye West oh, yeah. sparks controversy after serving sushi on nude women during 46th birthday party. See, that is. Definitely- you remember <laughs> vaguely remember this. This is definitely some Kanye shit. The, the problem is Kanye has had so much controversy that I forgot about this. Yeah. That's why I said vaguely. Yeah. And I'm surprised people got upset about that. Because, I mean, I think, like, we've seen it in movies and stuff. So I feel like he's the type to totally see something like that on a on a movie and run with it. His daughter was there. That's why I got upset. Oh. Mm. Oh. See, oh, yeah. I, okay, I'm not. I'm not gonna say that doesn't warrant outrage, but at the same time, you can't raise somebody else's kids. So, right. If if now, Grant, like let, let's just let's just say Little North or whatever child was there decides that they want to be an artist, right? And you took her to the French Museum and saw Leonardo the Deca- you know. What is that? They wouldn't say he was inappropriate for showing him, you know, a, a, you know. So like, if it's you, art, yeah, it's, it's I see what you mean. So if 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 like if he considered it art and he's on the more eclectic, controversial side, and he told her, "Hey, this is a woman's body," like I'm not here to sit here and judge him for that. Like I'm not. I don't. 
he lived a different lifestyle than me. Right. Because he, he took a $31 million loss on a, on a Malibu home that, you know, that was wild. I'm just explaining where the controversy came from. You know what I'm saying? I'm not I'm not passing judgment on the brother. I'm just saying that is why it was controversial is because, you know, it wasn't a statue. It wasn't a painting. It was a human model. You know what I'm saying? An actual human being that was naked in front of his child. So hey, that is why people had a problem with it. However you interpret that is how you interpret it. But that is why people had an issue with it. Though. That That's the reason. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, yeah. And I think that people get conflicting messages from Kanye because he's definitely been the one in the past to say stuff like, um, cause he's, he's teetered on both sides. He was the one who said that like, at one point he was trying to dress North at the time it was like two or three, like Rihanna. And then he realized like he was bugging out. He said he found the Lord. And then he was saying that he didn't want them to even be on the internet. They, he didn't want them seeing certain things and idolizing certain people. But then he, you know, has his girlfriend rocking, walking around basically butt naked majority of the time. Not exactly all the way nude, but a lot of times yeah. she's topless, you know, braless, exposing something. So I think it is, I think that's why people get confused with Kanye and it, it becomes a bigger thing and they don't see it as art anymore because like he and it's like you married Kim, It's like you married Kim K who had a sex tape which cool, you know, but then, you know, like you was talking about Marcus every few months, you know, or every couple of years or whatever it was, you know, she would break the internet usually with some sort of, you know, uh, sexy picture, you know what I'm saying? And so, or series of pictures or whatever, you know what I mean? But then there was a time where Kanye was like openly saying publicly that he wanted her to stop doing that. And then he wanted her to, you know, dress down and dress more modest and stuff. And it's like, yo, this is Kim Kardashian, bro. Like, this is who you married. Like, right. how you going to try to change her after the fact? Like, you knew who she was when you, you know what I'm saying? So that's, yeah. and then now the new girlfriend is, you know, giving them dome in public over in France on a boat and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Getting caught on camera and then walking around half naked everywhere. So it's like, yeah, you're giving conflicting messages, dog. Like, and now you got your underage daughter around a bunch of new models eating sushi off of their bodies. What are you doing? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, it's the too much of flip flopping on your like on like your ethics or like your beliefs, especially by like what you put out to the public. Because it's like you say one thing about how you want certain things to be, or just like the process of like what your life looks like, but then. Like, uh, like you said, Shane, like a couple of months later, it's like that whole picture looks completely different. So it's just like, it's hard because it's like, w w where, w which one is it with you, Kanye? Like, we don't know. Because you flip flop so much, so much on like what your actual beliefs are. So this is a deeper dive into Kanye. And I know it's not a Kanye episode, but Kanye possibly, like this was said by somebody else too. Kanye is on, could be on the spectrum. And the reason that Kanye is on this, but his mama was the, really the only one who could talk to him and relate to him and get him to calm down and to do things. And, you know, similar to kids with autism, you know, like you, they only have kind of that one acute focused person that their routine goes through their structure their you know, and then then unfortunately she passed and we, you know, said it was, oh, he's depressed. He's sad. And, and it might have been all of those things on top of being autistic you know so then now you don't have any of the support struck your whole routine is broken and now you have to find a new routine as an adult as a black man as a billionaire millionaire celebrity and you have to find yourself i mean how many times have we said celebrity you know all oh, i have to go you know they're still grounded they're still this they're still I, they they don't remember he all of that is gone for him or could be gone if he if he was uh, to, you know all of that is 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 null and void i don't have that so now i got to figure out how to manage this and how to do this and how to how to exit i don't think jay-z could be the jay-z he is today without going through what he went through before 
with Dame, business practices, you know, the betrayals, the hurts, you know, the he, he didn't, you don't just learn how to navigate contracts and, and to get these things, you know, you have to go through that learning process because you don't know what you don't know. So whereas Kanye has had all of these moments, you know, where he's finding himself always, he's always trying to find, like, what can I do? So I, I, I really, like, when I heard that he was autistic, that really kind of clicked the light bulb, like, damn, like, all of that shit, like, he's not crazy, he's not, th- like, he's just, all, he's just on the spectrum. Mm-hmm. I mean, that would make crazy. a lot of sense. It would answer a lot of, a, a, a lot of questions, if, if that were I don't, sure. I don't think it's a question, if, if, if he was, a, if he was legitimately to be on the spectrum, and this is going to sound crazy. It could possibly be the it, it could be what we talked about with Drake. Like, how does Drake bounce back from this low moment and become bigger and better? You know, like what we if Kanye was to say, hey, I'm on the spectrum or to be or just to be a voice of autism. I ain't even going to say the face. I'm not even going to say the, the, the pinnacle just to be a voice for autistic. He's in. He's 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 back to it's Jesus all over again. I could see that. I, I could one hundred percent see that happening. He, Jesus is re. It actually, that's the that's it right there. Jesus is reborn. That's not how the story ends. <laughs> Three. <laughs> I'm telling you, boy, that's gonna be Easter Sunday. You thought. You- Easter Sunday. <laughs> Easter, yeah, I'm telling you, bro. <laughs> Jesus is back. Oh man, we might get a Boondocks episode. That's a good one. Easter <laughs> Sunday. That would be. Hey, I'm telling, man. Mark these gems. If these, I, I, I promise you, I'm, we gonna go back to the archives with the dot with the time date stamps on how I called this. Right. I mean, I wouldn't doubt it. You've called a few things before, so. Yeah, you really have. So I'm not. I'm not even. I'm not even uh, holding the candle out to this one. Yeah, the fake. Yeah, kind that. How how could you? Because you know we went through this, and it, maybe it's because I'm like in a nonprofit charitable giving, like marketing. You know, it's my day job and all that. We we went through this thing with uh veterans, right? And I'm sorry, with we have a problem with race. Period. Black and white not getting equal attention. Uh, monetary compensation, financial, whatever you want to say, to different things when it's race involved. But so then, like, companies have to figure out how do we strategically align ourselves with different causes that's fair to everybody. So the first time we saw it was with veterans. Everybody loves the veterans. Can't You can't say anything bad about the veterans. Except, guess what? Only the white veterans was the ones getting the football fields and the come homes and the, you know, the the F-15s. There was nobody. Bl- then they was like, oh, well, damn. Well, we, now we got to have, you know, equal. We got to have a black and a white and all the rest of this. Then that became kind of controversial because people stance on the war. So then you take veterans out. Okay, well, who's safe now? Down syndrome kids. You can't go wrong with Down syndrome. If they have Down syndrome, black, white, and they're Down syndrome, that's what we're going to go with. That's the safest person that we can get behind, prop up, say that they need, they can wave a flag, they can, they can do whatever, whatever they want to do to be a functional member of society, our company can get behind. And that's where we are right now. It has to be safe, but it also can't be controversial. And Autism is the same way as Down syndrome. You know, it's the same. It's the same kind of like we can get behind that and forgive all. Yeah, and yes. forget that, and that's what Kanye needs to be to be forgiven, because if he every every uh, every antic, every saying, he, all all of the things he did with Trump, everything gets wiped away. Right yeah, away. I mean, it's more about like whether or not like um, they pick up on like social cues and exactly. certain yeah. behaviors that just the rest of us it, it fall in line with. Yeah, yeah, that's true. You, Jesus is going to be reborn. That would be very interesting. I mean, if, if, Boy, if there's it happens, one thing to, call it. 
Bro, yeah. go. And I, I'm talking about back like he never left. Could you imagine a Yeezus cyber truck? Oh my goodness. I'm sure. I could, could actually. I wouldn't. Really? Really $250,000. dollars And you. And they're all over freaking LA. I don't know where else they're popping up, but oh my God. I'm like, who knew? I knew that LA had a lot of money, but geez, man, those cyber trucks are everywhere, even after the recall. Like I've seen them in every color now. It's ridiculous. Boy, that all the all the Detroit rappers, like yeah. all the music videos, that's nothing that's all I see now is no, nothing but cyber trucks. <laughs> Hey, rest in key. I saw the uh, rest in yeah, keys the B King. I saw the the uh, celebration of life, Bruh, He was in Houston. They had a cyber truck on swingers, bruh. On for on like, come on, man. This is still like the that still that's cute. dope, though. That's dope. It though. was dope, but I mean, that's it was cute. Like, you cyber, you, you made a cyber truck with foes fold, on it. Like, come on. That's wild. So, yeah. Should have known someone was going to do it, though. Should have That's known. wild because those wheels look so old school and the cyber truck looks so futuristic. So, that mix up of the Man. two. And then it's, That's a wild it's, and then it's like about. this swinging. Like. <laughs> <laughs> Be careful because some things are breaking down. So, I don't know if you would want to add any other, anything else that could co possibly complicate that damn car. Like, good luck with that. I heard the pedals are falling off. They're talking about it doesn't tow anything. Like, the whole back frame will fall off if you try and tow so something. If you, so. I mean, if you could get, a, if you could honestly get, you you need a truck, right? Let's just say whatever. Name up. Give me an occupation that you would need a truck for. Like a landscaper. Am I really going to get a, a cyber truck to pull my landscaping equipment? <laughs> I would hope Hell not. no. Right. I so nobody not. getting a cyber truck talking about it can't tow anything matter. You didn't get a cyber truck because you, you should have got to a Ford F-150. <laughs> well, you know how the YouTubers are. So they always got to like go and like push the envelope and be like, you know, is this really a truck or can it really do what it says it does? And so this dude tried to actually like tow something. Like truck tow another vehicle and his whole entire back frame came out. <laughs> I was like, oh my god, you probably should have checked the material before you did it. He yeah. said he didn't know that like the whole bottom piece, that frame was just plastic. He thought it was metal too. So it just ripped all of that out. So yeah, you should probably double check those things before you yeah. do it. No. I'm good. <laughs> Me too. I'm good. <laughs> all right guys yeah we're good on this episode thank you guys so much for watching remember we are the bar exam you guys can see us every monday on the ethos media network youtube page and you can see even more candid conversations on the ethos media ethos media network patreon page because it gets really wild over there you definitely want to check that one out but we will see you guys on the next one this is bar exam <laughs>